Good morning, YouTube. I hope you had a wonderful week with your students. We've got one more week until break, and so my plan for today is to start out by using my prep period to get ready for next week. I want to have as easy a week as possible, a stress-free week, um, as if that's even possible as a teacher, but we're going to do our best, right? Um, but my goal is to get as much done as possible so next week I can just enjoy getting ready for the holidays, enjoy being with my students. I have a few things to set up for this morning. I have to set up some stations for my AP kids. They are working on um, FRQ-based questions, and I'll show you some of the things that I do with them to get them ready, specifically related to intermolecular forces. My honor students are working on their bonding unit. We're now in covalent bonding, and we have a do now today. They're going to be looking at internuclear distance and bond energy. And then we're going to be transitioning into making sure that they're ready for their quiz on molecular geometry on Monday. So I'm going to get some stuff set up today, and then I'll check in with you guys. And really the purpose of this video is to talk about some of my favorite simulations that I use with my students for bonding. These are amazing sims that work on Chromebooks and any really any device, and they're fantastic. They can support your students in understanding the differences between covalent and ionic bonding. And I can't wait to sit down and show you all the ones that I've been using. And of course, I welcome your feedback. If you've been using some in your classes that you absolutely love, you should absolutely leave a comment down below, but I'll check in with you guys in a couple of minutes. Before I get a lot of questions about the stations that I'm setting up, I wanted to just show you what I'm doing with them today. So the students um, will come in today. This will be their do now, where they'll be asked to read and annotate this um, guide about the do's and don'ts of intra and inter-particle forces. I love this handout. This is definitely not something I made. This is something that I took from either AP Teach or the AP Facebook group. Um, and so I give this to them just to understand what they should and should not say when they're constructing responses to intermolecular forces based questions. And then the stations is all based on intermolecular force practice. So um, I've got a handout that goes with each station. Whoops, this is upside down. It looks like this. This is FRQ1. And so FRQ1 looks something like this. Now this is not a free response question from the college board, um, but this is just something that I made. So I've got some molecules here, and then they need to um, rank the molecules. And um, I, you know, have a setup on each side so the students can kind of sort the molecules and then justify their rankings with the molecules. The second station looks something like this. These are snatums. Um, I absolutely love these, right? If you listen, listen. And here they snap, so that's why they're called snatums. I love them because it really shows that um, release of energy, which is nice when bonds form, right? And it takes energy to separate. So I really like these models. These are a lot of fun and they're really big and the kids can like move them around. So I wanted them to look at the isomers of pentane and look at those intermolecular forces. There's a QR code here that will take them to a video on it. And again, here's a handout. My handout kind of looks like that, right? Um, so this is for them to get the idea about, you know, how electron clouds can interact look at how um, you know surface area definitely plays a role in the intermolecular forces this station we now get into free response questions from the college board so for, so for here the students are going to be asked to um, keep the do's and don'ts in mind so this is a, a previous FRQ from from an AP exam um, and then over here Here's another free response question. So the remaining stations are all about free response questions from the exam. So really what's going to happen today is I'm going to tell my students I need you to at least do station number one or station number two. I'll let you choose which one. And then I'm going to require them to do at least two to three FRQ-based questions from the exam. And so this is kind of how I, how I set it up for my students so they can get access to the um, materials that they need. And they kind of work through it as, as they wish. And then at the end of class, I am going to show them the scoring guidelines for the FRQs from the college board and see how they fared and just kind of say, you know, this is something that you definitely want to keep in mind because this is often a challenging part of the exam, making sure that you include all the information that you need. 
Okay, check, stations are set up. Now what I have to do is get ready for the lab next week. My AP students are doing the infamous blue glitter lab or what I call the calming test tube. So I wanna get some acetone, my blue glitter in some test tubes. I really like this lab because it shows students how intermolecular forces plays a role in different phenomena that we are examining. It's a great lab, it incorporates some modeling. So I'm really excited for that. I think that'll be a really nice way to and end our week next week. Um, so I'm going to get that set up and then I want to make sure that I'm ready for my honors kids. And I'll probably check in with you guys, mm, maybe not next period, but the period after I'll have a little bit of time. So I'll check in with you guys, tell you how everything's going, and then we'll talk all things simulations. I just finished up with my period two class and now I'm in my prep period. And since I'm pretty much ready to go for the rest of today and I'm also ready to go for next week, I thought I would talk a little bit about some of the sims that I'm using to help my students understand the differences between ionic and covalent bonding. There are a ton of different sims, but I'm gonna show you the ones that I use frequently because I find them to be the most helpful and provides a lot of information to the students so that they get it. I like to start out every unit with some sort of phenomena-based instructional strategy, whether that be phenomenaling, whether that be question formulation technique, whether that be a lab. I really like the ability to throw my students into some sort of activity that engages them to have them think about how what we're learning about is going to help us understand that phenomenon, that activity, whatever we're doing. And so I chose to use um, a lab basically to talk about um, the properties of ionic and covalent substances. And then we took a deeper dive into conductivity. To start our unit on ionic bonding, I wanted my students to look at a sim. This sim is from SimBucket. What I like so much about this sim is it creates a really nice model of how ionic bonding is shown. And it, the students can kind of go through at their own pace and construct their own explanatory models to explain what's happening. I like how it shows the differences in size. I think it brings back some of those ideas with periodic trends. So all in all, this is how I choose to kick off my unit on ionic bonding so that my students are more clear on what an ionic bond is. I also really like how it relates the particle-like nature of matter to the macroscopic observations. So we can talk about, for example, the crystal structure and how the lattice structure forms and what a formula unit is. So I find that this simulation really brings a lot of concepts together for the students so they understand how this information fits with their pre-existing knowledge. That sim is a great sim for introducing ionic bonding. I would say it's perfect for introducing the idea of an ionic bond, reviewing ionic bonding, you could probably even use it in middle school. If there are any middle school teachers out there watching, that would be something that your students could definitely do with some scaffolding. The next sim that I want to introduce is what I use to help teach binary ionic formula writing and naming. And so for nomenclature, this is an amazing sim to help students understand that in order to get a neutral compound, you have to add just enough ions of each in order to make a net zero charge. So I really like this sim because again, it walks through the definition of ionic bonding, but it also reviews the octet rule and the idea that atoms need to gain or lose enough electrons so that they are isoelectronic with a noble gas. And so this is a wonderful tutorial that has the students go through not only like what an ionic bond is, not only looking at the octet rule, but they can spend some time actually putting pieces together to build their crystal lattice. So this is a wonderful tutorial that helps students to be able to derive the naming and formula writing rules associated with binary ionic compounds. The way I chose to start my unit on covalent bonding was much of the same. I decided to use another tutorial, and what I really like about this one, this is another one from SimBucket, is it shows students how covalent bonds form. It also talks about bond length and bond strength, so it has a little piece of like the energetics involved in covalent bond formation. But then I would say probably one of the best things is it teaches the rules for covalent bonding nomenclature. So I love that the students have time to be able to kind of click through and test their knowledge on looking at covalent bonding and how we name them as opposed to ionic compounds. So it really does a nice job of differentiating between the two. The final simulation that I use with my students is for molecular geometry. This is also from SimBucket and this is a molecular shapes tutorial. So it teaches all things Vesper. And I love this so much because again, students can click and drag, it's interactive, it shows how electron pairs repel each other. 
I love the analogies that it uses. It uses this thing called a ghost atom. So it kind of shows like why there's more repulsion. So this is incredibly effective in helping students understand why molecules take the shape that they do. The only thing about this one is it's a little bit limiting because if you teach honors or AP, there's really nothing in there about, for example, expanded octets, but I think it's really good to set the baseline. So I will often use this in honors, like as like a beginning type of thing, just like introduction to Vesper. And then for CP, this is really the only shapes that we cover here. So you won't see anything about expanded octets, but I still think that this provides the necessary foundation for students to understand what's happening. And then what's really cool about this is that the students can actually practice what they learn. So there's a little quiz at the end that the students can take to see that if in fact they understood the concepts that they learned in the simulation. You may ask the question, how do I hold my students accountable for the information that they're learning in a simulation? So the answer is I create a bunch of question sheets. It could be a question sheet. It could also be like a doodle notes guide. But you can see in front of you, this is my ionic bonding tutorial question sheet. So I just wrote questions based on what I wanted to tease out from the simulation. I provide a space for students to draw an explanatory model, review a little bit about some of the trends that we're seeing in ionic radius, and then I move into modeling. So these questions I created just to help my students understand what's happening in terms of electron configurations and then how do we model this as chemists. The other thing that I like to do, especially if like you don't really have the time to make questions necessarily, is you can do a doodle notes guide type of thing. So this was the molecular shapes tutorial. So this is something that again the students moved through but I just created this kind of blank space for the students to construct some notes um, write down their molecules, and again, my goal is for them to tease out the important things that I wanted them to understand from this activity. So that is it for the sims that I use in my bonding units. Again, these sim bucket sims I use over and over again. I keep coming back to them. Of course, I look at other ones and I think the FET sims are wonderful, but sim bucket has been just such a staple in my unit menus. And I think they really help students to visualize and see what's happening. It really makes the chemistry accessible to all learners. So if you haven't tried sim bucket and you wanna check it out, I will leave a link down below. They have a ton of other different sims that you can use as well well. If you know of any sims that you use that you absolutely love for bonding or anything, I'd love to know about it. Leave a comment down below. As always, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I'll be sure to check in with you guys very soon.